Hey, what's good? This is Black Authentic Truth, and I'm at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. I'm about to go in and check it out. Let's roll. So I was really excited to get the opportunity to even visit the Negro League Museum. Um, it's something that I really enjoy, something that I appreciate it. Um, and as you can see, it was a lot of documentation, a lot of pictures in history. It really goes in depth in the history so you can really get an idea. It has plenty of documentation and, uh, you know, um, captions to give you the accurate information and even has a timeline, which is really cool. Something that I really, you know, like you can get a, a real bigger view of what was going on, what was happening, because a lot of people don't know about the Negro Leagues. Right. <clears throat> And look at here, you got the socks. They showing you the socks with the um the different shoes that the the ball players wore. But a lot of people don't know about the Negro Leagues and I'm thankful that some people decided to keep that culture together and keep that history together by creating this museum cuz we had black leagues, basically Negro Leagues because we couldn't be in white leagues, so we had to create our own. And so that's what they did. They created their own and they did a damn good job at it. They, you know, they were prosperous to the to the point where white owners from from ball teams started to come to the Negro Leagues and look at the star players, man, and want to draft them into the American League. Right. And so, as you can see, man, we we was doing the damn thing. We was really doing it. And um, that's something that we have to instill in each other is to love your history, is to want to learn your history and, you know, want to know what happened. Right. Want to know. You know, how 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 did your four parents survive in America? You know, this is Rube Foster. He was the the um, National Negro Leagues ambassador or what would you call the executive and basically like a, a, a commissioner. Right. They say they say he's probably one of the best to ever do it. And we're talking about all, all leagues. Right. And he, he came from a he, he was a pitcher first. And he rose through the ranks and, and became what, what would you call, what you would call today as a commissioner. Um, so, yeah, man, D Detroit Stars, uh, Chicago Giants. You know, what I mean, you had all kind of teams, man. It'd be dope if somebody came out any Apple's ABC's. It'd be dope if somebody came out with, the, with, with some jerseys, man. I, I think somebody does make jerseys. But see, it's, it's, it's a real museum. It has, you know things from the past artifacts um from that time period uh it was really cool really really cool i really liked it um like i said it is very meticulous in all of their documentation and captions and you know giving you all the information all the teams um and you know it was hard them times man this we're talking about a time when it was you know all out racism like racism does exist still today but it's covert racism, right? They don't like to show the racism, but definitely this was a time when, you know, they're playing on these teams while their brothers are still being lynched. You know what I mean? Right around the corner. So this was not an easy time. You know what I mean? For nobody that was involved. Right. But our backs are always against the wall and we, we always come through, you know, as black people. You know what I mean? We've always, you know came from the bottom up like a typical living room set take you back to that era that no nostalgic feeling of you know what i mean being in that time period right the, the the way the museum is set up is real nice you know what i'm saying i like the the low lighting um definitely is something that if you're in town if you're around you should definitely go and visit the negro league museum you should definitely go um if you're a baseball fan, you definitely should go, right? You know what I mean? We, we really was doing it right here. They had the circus uh, baseball, basically clown teams, kind of like Harlem Globetrotters, like, you know, a team that would do things to make people laugh, you know? And that came out of the Negro Leagues. That was just a added um, entertainment element to the Negro Leagues. You see, these brothers was on, man. Brothers was was strong, black and proud. You know what I mean? Doing their thing. Ray Dandridge he played eight seasons in Mexico and Cuba. Damn. So you had black and brown teams. You had, you know, um, 
Cubans and, and Mexicans and, and, and black men together on a team living together, right? Holding it down, you know what I mean? Doing their thing on the team. That's Satchel Page. Satchel Page. Everybody knows who Satchel Page is, man. But it's just beautiful documentation um, that you probably couldn't get this much information about the Negro Leagues from anywhere else, you know, and it just beautifully puts everything in perspective and puts it put it together for you to understand. Now, this is a, a typical room that they would sleep in when it was traveling. Right. So this would be a typical room when you're traveling on the road, going to play some ball, right, going to play another team. A lot of times they were turned away. They couldn't stay in a lot of cities. You know, you know how it is. Sundowner towns and all that couldn't stay ain't nobody trying to feed you ain't nobody trying to give you no gas so you had to really plan out your route um you know where you was going to go and how you was going to get there here's a little video of, of, of the clown clown teams you know what i mean getting it in you know being silly having fun making people smile you know what i mean but yeah man it was it was a it was a hard knock life you know because you you had to just keep rolling until you find somewhere where they accept you, where they let black people uh, pay for a room and stay. Right. Most of the times people knew where they were staying. Most of the times they knew where they were going. Right. You got the Harlem Gold Trotters. That's going to say that's the that's the basketball element to the clown teams. Right. You got advertisements. This is a, a typical barbershop scene. Just take you back to that time period. Right. Kansas City, All right? You got the uh, the gates right there. You got a, uh, you know, they they got a little bit of everything just to take people back to that time period, right? It was a, it was a great time, and you can see, you can see the the um the pride in in brothers' eyes that played on these teams, right? They actually felt like they belonged to something, right? Even though these were segregated teams, man, these was. You know, in the big picture, you know, everybody hated us. But in the microcosm, in our world, our, our brothers were stars and they still stars like this could happen today with all the things that go on today. You know, with the the, uh, the um, Colin Kaepernick thing and the Kyrie Irving thing and all the issues that come up about black people in sports. Well, black people could have their own leagues again, man. With all of the technology we have today, and you look at back at like the time of Dr. Dre and Jay and all of that and Rucker Park and all of that, man. And you see how all those people used to come out. They used to be sitting on the roofs to, just to come see some some brothers play some street ball. Now, you think that people wouldn't do that the same for these people that are for these brothers and sisters that are stars that are stars in in, in, in these American leagues. Right. Stars making millions and billions of dollars for these corporations and these teams but imagine if all that money could be funneled into the black community look you even had sisters doing their thing mammy johnson connie morgan tony stone right imagine what could happen like people would come out and see they did it when when you know i think the nba was down they came to those uh when it was a, a you know lockout they came to those little gymnasiums and they came to those parks where uh, NBA players were at to see him. So as you can see with the Negro Leagues, they had they didn't have a lot, but they owned what they had, and it was ours. And the same thing can happen today. That's a lesson that I learned when I was walking through there. That all of this talent and ability that we have, but it gets taken away from us and it goes to someone else when all of that revenue can be going into the black community for programs after school programs to help us right instead of us feeling powerless instead of us feeling like we can't play or we can't do this or we can't speak on issues we got to just shut up and dribble shut up and hit the ball and play ball nah man not if we got our own negro leagues like our brothers and sisters had back in the day right so, yeah, man, if you have a chance, 
you in Kansas City, Missouri, man, go and check out the Negro League Museum on 18th and Vine, man. You like this video, you you know, you like what I push, black issues, black problems, past, present, and future, black authentic truth. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you share my video, man. And with that, this is Black Authentic Truth. It just won't let me move on.